All right, welcome back, everyone. Let's get set up our next player. So what we need to do is we have two options to kind of go about this. Either we can do everything from scratch, or what we can actually do here is simply go to our players and duplicate this guy and just say player two, hit OK, go into player two. And what we can do is simply delete the barbarian and find any other asset pack that we want for the character. And I'm going to use the mage. Now, you can see when I drag in the mage, it's not at the center. So we want to go to the transform and make sure to reset this to 000, zero, zero and simply make local. And that's it. Now we can see here that the script here is the same as player one. So for now, let's just remove this script by detaching the script from the selected node. Or if you hit this, uh, the little loop thing, it'll get rid of it. Uh, but don't worry, we'll come back to player two. Uh, but for now, we just want to focus on player one, getting him moving left and right and all that good stuff. All right, so inside of our player, let's now take a look at the script because we added a script. but We don't know what's in here yet. So just a little suggestion, and this is how I usually like to work, especially if you have several monitors. I have three monitors. I know it's a lot, but I usually put the script on another monitor by hitting in the script, this little thing, the make float. Uh, so this will basically bring out my script into another screen. There are also ways, uh, if you're curious in adding this script into Visual Studios, uh, I would suggest if you want that to search it up on YouTube, there are several tutorials. So go check those out. Now, in our script for our player, the first thing that we want to take a look at is uh, movement and flipping and animation. So let's take a look at movement first. Now, when it comes to movement, uh, right now we have a four directional movement, right? We have basically four inputs to look at, and we're moving in four directions, right? Now, that's not exactly what we want because what we want is to move on one axis or one axis. So if we go back to our main scene here, we can see that we can either optionally, we can either move on this axis, the red line, which if we look at the top right is the X axis. If I click the X axis, uh, we can actually kind of drag the line along where I want, right? Uh, and this is the Z axis, right? The blue line. You can see that it correlates to the color. And the green one, of course, is the Y. Now, obviously, we don't want to walk up or down on the Y. Uh, we just want to walk in the X or the Z. So we have two options, basically. Now, what we can do is either move on the X or Z. Now, basically pick one, uh, but let's take a look back at the script and take a look how we can do that. So what we're going to do is take a look at the input direction. Now, this takes four inputs or four vectors, but there's another way of doing this. What we can do is say input dot get action strength. And this will get us, essentially, it will return one or zero. So what this does is it's basically checking. It's asking the computer, hey, are you clicking this button? So this UI right corresponds to the right arrow key on your keyboard. Now, if you want to do a other input mapping, we'll take a look at that in just a second. So like WASD, we'll take a look at that in a minute uh, because that is how we will be doing player two. So this will be for player one for the arrow keys. Now, so yeah, this is basically checking, hey, are we clicking the arrow right key? If we are, we're going to return one. If we're not, we're just going to return zero. Now, the reason we're going to do this is because now what we can do is subtract this from the same thing. So we're going to say this exact same thing, but instead of right, we're going to do left. Now, the reason this works is because if I'm pressing my right arrow key, I'm going to get one minus zero, right? And one minus zero is, is one. And that means that we're going to go one to the right. Now, if I'm doing the opposite, if I'm not clicking the right arrow key and I'm clicking the left arrow key, this will give me negative one, meaning I'm going to go to the left. So that basically corresponds to right and left on our screen. So usually when we take a look here, if we go to the transform and I start moving my character on the X axis, you can see if I move him to the right, this uh, number right here goes upwards. If I move him to the left, it goes to the negatives. I'm just going to control Z to make sure he goes back to the middle here. Bring my script back. And that's it. Now, you can see here we have a bunch of direction stuff. We're not going to just delete all this. Instead, what we're going to do here is we're going to simply set the velocity dot X equal to input direction. 
times speed. Now, here's kind of a question or problem in a sense, right? Is the velocity, right? Now, if you have your scene set up differently, basically you're trying to move on this axis, which is the Z axis, which is actually what I have in my other project, then you need to make sure in the velocity you set it dot Z. Right now we're going to move on the X and that's totally fine. There's no difference. It's just dependent on where the camera is. So my camera right here is looking towards the X axis. So I want to make sure I'm looking towards there. So when I hit play, I can move left and right. And there we go. And we can still jump up and down. And this is perfect. This is pretty much all we need. So the next thing we want to do is take a look at rotation. Now, in terms of rotation, all we need to do here is actually check to see if the input direction is not zero. If it's not zero, then we'll rotate our player. Because if it's zero, that means I'm just not clicking anything. And the cool thing about this is that it'll leave the rotation on the last thing that I pressed. So all we need to do now is simply set the rotation and type rotation. And we're going to rotate on the Y axis because when we take a look at our player here, if I rotate on the Y axis, that is what I want to use to change my facement, essentially. Facement, I just invented a new word, apparently. Uh, but yeah, that's it. So rotation.y, and we're going to be setting this to negative i divided by 2 uh, if it's greater than 0. So if the input direction is greater than 0. So this essentially will set it to negative i divided by 2 which means that we're setting it uh, if, sorry, if the input is greater than zero, meaning I am pressing the right. So this is for the right. Now, what about the left? Uh, we'll change it or we'll follow up with a else uh, with pi divided by two. So this is going to be the uh, left. All right, so now if we hit play, and we can now see I'm going in the completely opposite direction that I want, and that makes sense. I was thinking about it and I mess up these directions. This one should be negative and this should be positive. Let's try one more time. And there we go. We now have the correct directions. So when I hit the left arrow key, you can see I'm going to the left. When I'm going to the right arrow key, I am looking at the right. And that's it. That is how we create rotation. Super simple using a little bit of pi. And that is essentially it. All right. Uh, for the next challenge, this is going to be a little bit of a trickier challenge, uh, and it's totally optional. I want you to pause the video and see if you can figure out uh, to map different inputs for the player two. Now, this is something I have not covered. I have not taught this. The reason I'm bringing this as a challenge is to get used to thinking about features that you want to add to your game and then thinking, OK, well, how do I figure that out? Right? You can either do it through documentation. You can look for different tutorials online. I know you're watching this tutorial right now, but that is the idea that I want you to get used to. In the future, when you're kind of thinking about different features that you want to add, you need to get used to finding ways to solve them by yourself. So pause the video, even close this video if you'd like, and take a look at other videos on how to input map, basically. So the specific wording that I want you to maybe look for is map the inputs or input mapping. All right. So this is a weird challenge, I know. Uh, and it's totally optional. I'll show you guys how to do it in just a second, uh, but go for it. I encourage you to try this challenge. I think it'll be fun.